Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to fulfill your ambition to be a travel videographer. So whether you're looking to create vlogs for YouTube or create a TV show for a station, you're gonna to need to know how do you get started? How do you make money from it? How do you film it in such a way to tell a compelling story? And then how do you use your video to sign up more deals so you can continue creating travel shows and traveling around the world? But before we start, a little bit about myself. My name is Paris Norris, and I create a TV show here called Guy in Dubai, which covers all the fun and adventurous things in the UAE. We've done everything from powerboat racing, zip lining, to eating the world's spiciest chili wings, which actually put me in hospital. Now, we decided to take our adventures abroad and create a travel show and find out what adventures we could find in other people's countries. The first stop was Ireland, and we managed to collaborate with the Irish Tourism Board to film a whole 45 minute episode of the fun adventures of Ireland. Now, I'll leave in the end screen the clip of Ireland so you can watch the whole video. In the meantime, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, then do so and you'll find all of our clips of our fun adventures. Now, let's get started. I forgot to turn my glasses on. <laughs> there we go, okay, glasses on. So how do you get started with your travel videos? In order to do a good job, you need a sponsor because a sponsor's ideally gonna either pay you to go do it or at the very least, they'll cover your trip. The key people to get in touch with are the tourism boards of the countries, and if you can't get in touch with them, then sometimes hotels will help you out. Also, you might wanna tie up with an airline, and an airline might be able to help you not just with one episode, but at various episodes. All sponsors are gonna to want to see that they can get some kind of viewership and have some kind of placement within your video. The question is, is you know, what have you already done? Now, you don't necessarily have to have done a travel show in order to impress them, because if you've created some social media following through your other videos, then that's also credible, because essentially you have the audience there. If you have a TV show on a platform, that you can essentially show them that you already work with a TV station and that you can submit your travel show to that TV station, then that's also credible to be able to get your first gig. If you have none of that, then you need to start thinking about how do I grow my audience and how do I get some material? Now you might want to think, if I'm starting from scratch, why not video on my next holiday and start doing what you can? It's gonna get you at least from zero to one, you know, and then from there, you might be able to build a small bit of audience and you might have something to show people. That's how you get started. When you start working with a sponsor, if it's a hotel or the tourism board, you'll need to work very closely with them to work out your itinerary. You're gonna have a particular focus in terms of how you do your show. Now that might be adventure, it might be culture, you might be looking at history or people, whatever it is. You wanna work with the tourism board or the hotel or whoever is your travel partner and create the itinerary with them because they will have links to all the best places. They'll not only be able to advise you where to go, but they can probably get those free because of their arrangements or at least very cheap. And you'd be expecting, hopefully, for them to at least cover that. That's when you're getting started. And of course, once you get going and you're, your, your feet are rolling, you wanna be making some money from this. Now you've got your sponsors on and you've got your schedule planned out in terms of what you're gonna be doing on your stay. You need to start planning how you're gonna film. And planning is really key because the first thing you're gonna realize when you touch ground is, I've never been here before. I don't know, you know what's going on. And you didn't get to do a site visit. Now, usually when you're filming, you'll be able to check out the site and figure out what you're gonna do. But this time, you've gotta roll with the punches. So you've gotta be ready to be a bit flexible and take opportunities when you see them. You know, you'll discover things on the ground that you'll realize we have to take shot of this because this is brilliant. And, and you wouldn't know that until you're there. Whilst you have to be flexible and adaptable when you're filming, it's really, really important that you do your research beforehand so you've got all the facts and figures and some useful information so that you can put some substance into your video. Best way to go about doing this, ask the tourism board. They'll send you all the information on each activity, but also ask them to link you up with the activity providers so that you can actually speak to them and get them to send you some information. And also liaise with them and say, look, this is what we're planning to do in terms of filming. Who can, who can come and be interviewed? And, you know, and, and see who they can put forward. For example, we, we did a, a shot uh, white water rafting and I said, look, I need some other people in the white water raft so that we can have them. And it looked, you know, when we filmed it, that, that it was an actual uh, trip. It wasn't just me in a, in a raft on my own, which would have looked totally stupid. So, you know, you need to communicate with these people before you go. Plan your trip, write your scripts, have a, a lot of research so that when you're on the ground and you haven't got 
roaming data and you're not able to check the internet to, to find out information, you've got it printed on a piece of paper so that you can actually put some substance into your video. So next I wanna to talk to you about what equipment do you need for your travel videos. One of the most important things that you're gonna to have to understand is as much as you would love to take everything that you have and have the biggest and best equipment, chances are nine times out of 10, if you're doing a travel show, you're probably gonna be taking an airplane probably at least more than once. And airplanes have travel restrictions on weight. And you need to find out before you fly on every flight what those travel restrictions are. Because you might find that you've got 30 kilogram travel restriction on your first flight, but on your next flight, to the next place you're going, it might only be 20 kilograms. So you need to think about this because what are you gonna do with those other 10 kilograms? Take a look very closely at what you've got to play with and you need to weigh your equipment before you go because the last thing you want to do is have to leave some expensive equipment behind in the airport. If you're traveling in twos or threes, Obviously you need to then coordinate. If some person's only got 10 kilograms and you've got 30, you need to see how you can share the weight. But with that in mind, you then need to think about economically, what equipment do we really need and which is heavy and not necessary. So another key factor when you're filming travel videos, and this may sound obvious, but it's your battery management because you're gonna be filming back to back, usually filming for a good full day and day after the other, staying in hotels, often a bit jet lagged, and if you come back after a day of filming, you kind of want to sleep. So you have to be absolutely diligent that you're recharging all your batteries for your camera, for your lights, for your microphone, gimbals, drones, all at the end of the day, overnight, so that when you start the next day, you've got everything prepared. Now, of course, always make sure you've got backup batteries as well, because you're gonna need them. When it comes to battery management, as well as having a lightweight camera, what is the right camera? The one we use, is this one here. This is the Nikon Z6. Because this is a mirrorless camera, this makes it much, much more lightweight. So this is actually perfect. This isn't gonna weigh down your bags when you're uh, going through customs. Yet at the same time, this has 24 megapixels and can shoot 4K at 30 frames per second. So this uh, essentially can do TV quality video and it's still fairly light. So these mirrorless cameras are brilliant. This has the biggest mount of any mirrorless camera. So this allows you to use much faster, higher quality lenses, which is key. If you're traveling, you wanna be using a lens that has quite a lot of range because instead of taking one short lens and one long lens, you could probably get away with having one that has a lot of range. You can also see we've got a flippable screen here. That's also very useful. It's also a touch screen. The menus are self-explanatory and much easier to use than many cameras. A lot of people have a lot of issues trying to navigate the menus and end up not using the full features of the camera just because the menus difficult to understand. But with the Nikon, they've really thought about this and it's you know very easy to use. Some key features that you'll really find useful is the slow motion. I do a lot of action shots and it's fantastic when you can have a, a, a pre-setting to put it straight into slow motion so that you don't have to do it in the editing. Now a scenario you're most likely gonna find yourself in when you're doing a travel show is you're often gonna be filming in low lighting. You might wanna take with you a small light, but you're not gonna be able to take heavy lights with you when you're traveling. So a small light will be sufficient in some circumstances, but in many it's not. You need to play around with the ISO of your camera. And the Nikon Z6 has the biggest range of ISO from 100 up to 51,200. This will uh, be able to show what appears to be quite light when actually it can be quite dark. So it's uh, very useful when you're doing travel shows. Now, I need this camera, so we're gonna put this back. We'll let the Z6 do its job. Now, you're probably not gonna take the Z6 with you whitewater rafting or up a mountain. You're not gonna uh, wanna break a piece of equipment like that. So you're also gonna need some action cameras, you know, something that's gonna be small, that you can clip to yourself here or here, that's essentially some kind of shockproof camera uh, that you can take with you. Take that and obviously take all the accessories you're gonna need in order to attach it correctly. Also, you may wanna think, should I be using drones? Now, before you ever think about taking a drone to any country, you need to check the drone laws because it's not simple. And every country has different drone laws. Some countries outright don't allow drones. So check that out before you take your drone and don't fly a drone uh, in another country if you haven't got permission because you will find yourself in trouble. So check that out. But if you are able to fly drones, you know, they're often not a, a big weight in your luggage and they can add some amazing shots. You know, great aerial views, beautiful scenic shots that will add huge huge value to your video. Definitely think about uh, how to do that. We made a mistake in our last travel video where we uh, took our gimbals with us. I'll be honest with you, we used it once. It wasn't that helpful. Pretty much the rest of the time, it was very heavy to carry around. Think very carefully 
which scenes are we gonna need uh, gimbals in? If you don't need it, don't take it, it's too heavy. Now I probably don't need to tell you this because if you're experienced in videos, then you know this already. But the difficult thing is always making sure you get uninterrupted sound. I've always found getting the visuals correct is not that difficult, but getting the sound correct, especially when you're in, in public places and there's background sound or, or there's interference, is often very, very difficult. So take a few different microphones, always take some lapel mics for interviews, take some shotgun mics for general sound, and that should be enough. So now that you've figured out what equipment you need to film, let's take a look at how do we create a compelling story for your travel videos? Because let's be honest, there are tons of travel vlogs. There's millions of travel shows, but what makes yours different? So you need to figure out why it is that you're going to this country. What are you looking to uncover? Who are you looking to meet? What are you looking to find there? What experiences are you looking to have? You know, and state this early on in your video. Now we did a travel show in Ireland and I'll leave the uh, end screen at the end so you can take a look at the whole video. And at the start we decided, let's state what our purpose is so that people then know throughout the rest of the video why we're there and what we're looking to find. Say hello to the island of Ireland. It's a beautiful country with a rich history of legends and tales. The people are a soulful bunch with a reputation of being up for the crack. I've come to put that to the test and uncover what the island of Ireland has to hold. The purpose of my visit is simple, to hunt down the thrills, meet the people, and see how they like to have a good time. Welcome to Ireland! <laughs> now I mentioned earlier, it's really key to do your research. Research in order to find out what there is to do, but really so that you can create a bit of a plan and be able to understand where you might have a beginning, a middle and an end of your video and how you might film those and plan the things that you're gonna say in order to structure your video. Now, of course, you can do a lot of this in editing, but it really makes it a lot easier if you plan this ahead of time so that you can actually understand, okay, this is gonna be uh, a part where we might wanna focus a bit more and create a little bit of drama in the middle there so that you've got some kind of happy ending that you can then resolve at the end. Often when you're filming a travel show, you have your itinerary, but you've never been there before. And often you get there and you realize that actually what you thought was gonna be exciting and really good to film is not as good as you thought. Meanwhile, you figured out somewhere else where it is a little bit more interesting. And we certainly found this when we did our island video and we discovered something called bog diving, which was nuts. A real key part of being able to make the story continuous is how you link all of these activities and things that you're doing together. And you're gonna find in travel videos, you're gonna go from one activity to the other, to the other on different days. In order to make it a continuous story, you have to figure out how in your video you can link these so that it has some continuity. You have to think about this when you're in one location, what is it that I can say in order to link us to the next place? We found a particularly difficult scenario in our video where we went from bog diving, which is jumping in mud, going to a stately home, which was one of the nicest estates in Ireland. And how did we link them? So we came up with a creative way to try and make it look funny. Let's go for dinner. Whoa, right, got the bog water out of my ears, spruced up and looking good. Got to be looking sharp because we've got the Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby coming up, which is the biggest event in the Irish horse racing calendar. Now, I'm looking for a hotel around here called the K Club. Oh, I think that'll be it. Now you can see how we tried to link one location to another, even though there were three hours apart in terms of driving time. And we did that by just creating a, a funny little clip there in the video where I jumped out of the bush. Quite often you don't realize that you, you haven't connected the pieces uh, in the video and you haven't filmed anything. So how do you overcome that? What we found to be incredibly useful, especially with travel shows, is using voiceover. Because the voiceover can help tell the story and it can help link section to section. Now you'll see in this next clip here, we went from somewhere in midday and then we jumped straight to the next morning and we realized that we hadn't filmed anything between midday and the next morning. So I had to use the voiceover to link it. To rest my head before an early start tomorrow, I've come to a small seaside town called Port Rush. So it's 6.30 a.m., we're staying at the Atlantic Hotel. So you can see how we use voiceover to really effectively move from one scene to another. We also use voiceovers at the intros of the video and the outro because it almost worked like a third person perspective talking and really was able to narrate the story really well. 
You'll also see that we use maps. And maps are a really effective way of allowing people to understand the route of your journey and make them feel like they're coming along with you on the journey. If you're good at animation, then you'll know how to do this better than we do. We did it using After Effects and we sometimes use Premiere Pro. So play around with those and uh, I'm sure you can create some really good map animations. One of the disadvantages of filming travel videos is you're probably not going to be easily able to go back and take the shot again. So when it comes to collecting your B-roll footage, collect double the amount than you usually do. And if in doubt, get the shot. So now you've got your video filmed and edited, what do we do with it? Obviously you're going to submit it to the TV station you're working with or you're going to post it on YouTube and that will get you more views. But also think about submitting it to the sponsors, the tourism board or the hotel that you worked with. Do that and I'm sure that they're willing to distribute it, as well as all the activity providers of anything you did. Often, these guys have very big followings too. That will help you get more viewership and maybe some other tourism company will pick that up and, and want you to uh, work with them. It's also really, really key that now that you've got a working example, that you send this to every tourism board that you want to work with and say, hey, it's me, this is what we created uh, for this country, can we come and create the same thing in your country? So that should give you a good overview of what you need to do to get started. But the only way to really know is to get out there and do it and learn from experience. And I know you can do it, so give it a shot. Now, if you want some inspiration, check out our video on Ireland that we created. I hope you enjoy it, but I'm sure you'll see uh, a few little good ideas that you could use in your own. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out some of the videos that we've got coming up. We've got some really interesting, fun, action-packed adventures coming up. So, I'll see you next time. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move my arms around like this. With you live from the living room. Bonjour, je m'appelle Harry. Can you say something now? Mother.